Copper, what a fascinating metal it is. Actually, its name comes from the ancient Greek term for Cyprus, Kupros, because for thousands of years, copper has been mined on that island. But when we say copper, most people think of the good old copper penny. We don't use it in Canada anymore. And you know what? The latest version wasn't even fully copper. It was only a couple percent copper. The rest of it inside was, was zinc. Well, copper uh, is a great conductor of electricity. That's why we use copper wiring. It's a great conductor of heat. That's why cooks love it. But what I want to talk about here today is copper dissolving in water. Well, copper doesn't dissolve in water in the sense that you don't get little bits of copper floating around in the water. But what can happen is that copper reacts with water to form soluble compounds. What I have here, for example, is copper carbonate. And you can see it's kind of a bluish compound. And this forms when copper comes into contact with carbonic acid. Well, there's always some carbonic acid present in water, so that any time that you have contact between a copper vessel and water, you can have some copper going into solution. Why does that matter? Well, actually, it doesn't matter a whole lot. We need copper for our health. Copper is part of many, many enzymes. We need very little, though, but one milligram a day, and we get plenty of that from food, because anything that grows in the ground will have a small amount of, of copper in it. Uh, in fact, uh, in Ayurvedic medicine, they even recommend drinking from copper cups in order to enhance our copper intake for health. Now, curiously, there's also concern about too much copper being leached out from a copper cup. Those of you who are familiar with this uh, rather fascinating beverage called the Moscow Mule may recently have heard about some concern. Moscow Mule is a concoction made with vodka, ginger beer, and, and lime juice. So it is somewhat acidic. And the worry is that when it is consumed from a copper mug, and that's what it's supposed to be consumed from, I'm not sure why, maybe because you also had ice to it and it's supposed to keep it cold longer. But the concern is that there is copper getting into our system. And that high doses, copper can be toxic, which of course is true. The question is, is there really a high dose? I've looked into this, and the fact is that the solubility of copper is very, very low. Even when it stands in contact with water for 16 hours, you get a minimal amount. Yes, yeah, somewhat more if you put an acid into it, but even if you assume that there's 10 times more leaching with an acid, it's still a minimal amount. And of course, you don't store your Moscow mule in that copper mug for 16 hours at a time. So. I have absolutely no concern about drinking from a copper mug. I don't have a Moscow mule here, too complicated to make. Mm. With water from it, it's fine. Anyone who should be concerned about this, well, there are, of course, are copper vessels that are lined inside, either with tin or with paint or with iron. And then, of course, there would be no leaching of the copper you might worry then about leaching of something else in, into the water. And finally, the supposed therapeutic effect of copper. You may have heard stories about how wearing a copper bracelet is beneficial if you have aches or pains. Why? Because, I guess according to the theory, tiny amounts of copper dissolve in the skin, get into your bloodstream, and uh, kind of rejuvenate the enzymes that take care of pain. Uh, there is really no scientific validity to that. I think if anyone is feeling better because of that copper bracelet, I think they're just experiencing the placebo effect. That's an important effect, though, and uh, we'll drink to that.